Our next speaker is going to talk a little bit about a, a medical imaging startup called Arteris. So John Xario Chilius um, is the CTO and co-founder of Arteris, which is a medical imaging startup. Uh, he leads the um, he leads the development of the cloud platform as well as the uh, deep learning and regulatory teams. Currently, Arteris is working in the areas of oncology, cardiology, and neurodegenerative diseases. Um, and so please help me in welcoming John with his talk titled, AI and Radiology, It's Not Hype, It's Here. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, it's great to be back to uh, Stanford. Uh, it's, it's like being back at a resort. Uh, I love being here. Um, AI and radiology. Um, over the next few minutes, uh, I'll try to convince you that it's not just hype, it is here. Uh, over, over the last 12 months, uh, there's been so much buzz and excitement around what, um, what ML, deep learning, artificial intelligence can, can do. And there's been a lot, of, uh, a lot of startups in the field and a lot of big players that have made uh, bold claims, but there's actually been very few companies that have created a clinical product, and we're, we're thankful to, to, be, to be one of those. And I'll hopefully kind of go through some of the steps that, that we did to, uh, to, to actually get this product right into the clinical workflow and get it, um, and get it approved. Um, I, it's, it's funny, I, I get asked the question every day almost as to when AI will replace the radiologist. So j just like Kurt mentioned, uh, I also have his same belief that uh, they will get augmented and I do think that they will evolve and that they will become more efficient with, with automation. Um, but it's interesting, it, depending on who's asking the question, it, it is loaded because radiologists have a very specific answer and investors really have a, a very different perspective. So I want to just talk a little bit about some of the practical uh, issues that we're seeing today and, and some of what we've solved. Um, as as our, our, the previous speakers have talked about, there's just a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of imaging exams, not a lot of time. So the, these, these clinicians are actually very, very burdened. There's a lot of uh, inter-reader variability, which, uh, uh, which just involves and this, uh, leads to inaccuracy. Uh, we know that data is not being leveraged today and really the infrastructure within the hospitals is, is archaic and uh, um, there's just, it's really not connected. So we, we strongly believe that it does require new infrastructure. Um, as there were some examples as to what, what is this error rate and there's some studies published that uh, there's an average of 30% error rate in, in, in some cases. Um, so this is massive and we strongly believe that deep learning specifically can, can, can reduce this dramatically. Um, what, the, the way we feel in radiology, uh, specifically imaging software today, it's very manual, it's, it's tedious, uh, there's a lot of variability, the data is not being leveraged, it's qualitative, and it's, there's really a lot of subjectivity to this. Even though there's claims to say that it is automatic, it, most of the time clinicians spend time just redoing this automatic result. So our, our vision is just moving and translating this into automatic, accurate, quantitative, and, and, and data-driven approach. So how are we doing this today? Uh, th this is our vision. So uh, the way our platform works, uh, a patient gets scanned, the data gets sent to our cloud, um, then the, the users can log in into a, just a zero footprint viewer, uh, analyze the, the report, and validate this report, uh, and make any modifications they want, and ultimately, where we see, the, uh, where we see products going is uh, bringing in the EHR data and really providing a, a predictive analytic. Um, so, so, so practically, um, this is the infrastructure. So when, uh, when, when we talk about some of the challenges that we've solved, one piece is specifically is just getting our product right into the clinical workflow. So we've partnered with GE Healthcare and Siemens to really try to get the images as efficiently as possible out of these machines and into the cloud. So that there's very tight integrations there. Um, the, the second is a, a PHI service. So this is a unique piece of technology that we've developed to de-identify the data prior to it leaving the hospital network. Um, it's actually a really key component to scale and to really reducing the risk around trying to get, um, or, or let's say share, sharing a patient information. Uh, the next piece is really this idea of a distributed cloud. Uh, the, uh, there's a lot of advantages to having 
uh, to having GPUs and to, and to, and to le leveraging, um, let's say, infrastructure globally. Um, we, we provide a, a, a layer of AI and deep learning on, on top of this kind of cloud computation. And ultimately, we feed that back into a user's web browser. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's their footprint. And what happens is as they interact with that data, they can modify. And those modifications are actually stored and then uh, used for retraining. And lastly, we provide a layer of quantification. So we truly believe that radiology needs to move from qualitative and subjective to quantitative and objective. Uh, we've talked a, a little bit about uh, what are the benefits, but w I really want to emphasize a cloud-based approach to AI, and specifically this idea that of collective intelligence. By leveraging our system, we're, we're, we're really aggregating the inputs from not only different, uh, different users within the same hospital, but different hospitals within a region or really globally. Um, our, our system really gets smarter with time because we're actively every day collecting ground truth data. And really, one of the key, um, key points that our, that our sales teams make out there is, is we can say that uh, th there's no reason for you to opt out of, of sharing your data because you can benefit from the input of really a 1,000 physicians. Um, just how we use cloud computation. Um, so we, we highly leverage GPUs for rendering, segmentation, pre-processing, inference. And uh, just a couple of examples here for visualization. Uh, we, we can render 60 gigabyte files in real time on a mobile device. And you can only do that with a distributed GPU, GPU network. On the quantification side, we really have to make inference real time. Uh, if, if you try to run a deep learning model it, on a single CPU, it could take 10 minutes or more. And on a GPU, it can take just a few seconds. So there's really great power in, in, in trying to make all of this real time and fast, because it needs to be. Uh, uh, radiologists don't want to wait and, and have a spinner on their UI. So that's really one of the key drivers as to why we leverage GPUs. And um, I think that when, when people say, oh, we only buy on-premise software, it's expensive to maintain and to, and to have a GPU cluster at every hospital. And it's just difficult to scale. In terms of the value for deep learning, uh, we, we leverage it for automation. So there's a couple of examples here, detection, prediction, classification, tracking, and segmentation. And I, I really want to uh, give, a, give a key example as to how deep learning has changed our business. We have, um, uh, we, when you think of machine learning uh, and machine learning scientists in the past who've developed algorithms for automation, that they still needed some kind of expertise to, to create the features uh, that, are, that, that, we're, that we're looking for in these images. And what's fantastic about deep learning is that we can just hire some great computer scientists who know nothing about medical imaging and in a couple of weeks have them create amazing models, state-of-the-art models that just beat out any other machine learning algorithm. It's, it's amazing. So just a little bit about um, uh, a lot of questions I get asked as to how do, you, how do you keep at the forefront? If you have all these companies creating all these models, um, how, do you, how, how, do you, how do you stay relative? Well, the way I think about it is deep learning is really the tip of the iceberg. Uh, you, you can create a model in a few weeks, but that's not what it takes to get it into the clinic and get, let's say, FDA clearance on that product. So uh, this, these are just a couple examples of what it takes to create, create a cloud-based um, software as a service that's uh, distributed globally. Uh, we, there's deep learning, there's the rendering, there's integration with OEMs. Uh, we have the PHI service, zero footprint integration, regulatory teams, quality teams. There's so much infrastructure to actually get uh, a commercial product out there, let, let alone the sales and marketing. So it's, it takes a, a, a mammoth effort, and it doesn't, it's not just the 5% of effort required to, to make the model. Um, just a couple examples uh, of, of practically how we're solving the PHI service. Um, it's, um, when the patient gets scanned, the, the, the uh, patient information gets um, stripped away from, from, the, um, from the images. The encrypted pixel data gets sent to the cloud. And when a user logs in within their Chrome session, they, they actually get two, um, two pieces of information. One is the encrypted pixel data, and two is the PHI from the hospital. So Arteris actually never sees one ounce of, of any patient health information. Uh, it's a unique solution that actually uh, Stanford uh, forced us to create almost three years ago when we went into their security review and they said, all right, we're moving to the cloud. Are you guys ready? And they said, hell no. <laughs> it, was, it, was a, it was a tough, tough negotiation. So we were, we were, um, we were, we were um, you know, passionate about moving to the cloud, and that really forced us to think about a solution of, of how we could do it.
Um, so practically, what's, uh, what's our first application where we're leveraging deep learning? It's in heart segmentation. Uh, the, the process of trying to annotate uh, the borders of the heart muscle is very tedious, especially if you're annotating for every phase. So th that could take up to uh, 30 minutes or even an hour in, in some cases. Um, this is this is our this is our product. Specifically, what it's doing is it can replace those 30 minutes of annotation and in, into a couple seconds. So when a user logs in, they see all of this. Uh, of uh, so it's completely automated. Now uh, a user can validate this and make modifications. So we're a, we're a class two medical device. Uh, we don't suggest a diagnosis. We 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 give them the tools that they need in order to 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 um, to give that the diagnosis to the patient. Um, and a couple, of a couple other examples um, here on the far left is just a standard chest, chest um, um, CT. What we can do is to take these images and produce probability maps from the deep learning output. And from there, we, we, we create segmentations and, and really the 3D volumes that, um, that users can modify. And, uh, and again, uh, uh, that's, that's, again, 5% of the problem. It's, it's really about how do you make it efficient to modify if, if it's not as accurate, or when it fails, what do you do? Uh, on the right is just a glioblastoma case where, where we're showing the, the, the enhanced part of the tumor, the, the, the tumor core, and the whole tumor there, again, with probability maps. So right now, we want to move from this idea to make simple 2D measurements to this, this idea to 3D segmentations and, and full, fully 3D quantitative results. Um, I, and, and lastly, just we talked a little bit about the future, and it's just so ripe to be able to combine all this data with the, with EH, EHR data. And we strongly believe that imaging is a is a really core of, of trying to make this happen. So with that, our vision of the hospitals of tomorrow is really this connected, scalable infrastructure, uh, having all these tedious, repetitive tasks automated, um, and really augment clinicians um, to, to really leverage this data. Great. Thanks very much.